Folks of the weather, welcome to this edition of State of the Weather Address. We've got an Arctic explosion expected to spill into the United States. It's up here right now. Where's it headed? That's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. I'm going to talk about the intensity of this Arctic blast. And I'm going to go over a couple of different models and what model I think has the best handle on this Arctic outbreak and which has the worst. And so I'll kind of give you my forecast with that as well. So let's get right into this episode of Stay the Weather Address. It's going to be some historic cold. Now before we get started, I'm in the process of creating some historic weather event breakdowns. We're going to talk about the weather event itself. We're going to include some videos, some photos maybe. And then I'm also going to do some forecasting tutorials as I break these historic forecasts down. So, for example, I might talk about a blizzard that happened a few years ago, a supercell, a tornado. Comment below what you'd like me to talk about, what kind of events you'd like me to talk about, and I'll start making some videos for those. So, uh, go ahead and do that, and uh, let's get right into it now. All right, welcome to the other side of this video. And the first thing we want to look at when examining these outbreaks is the jet stream around 500 millibars we're gonna look at some of the vorticity and we're gonna examine just kinda of the general pattern and if we might have some snow associated with this outbreak so there are gonna be some areas that might get some snow but we got some long wave troughing out here some colder weather north of that and some colder weather currently in the northern two thirds of the uh, United States right now and uh, this general pattern was kind of what we were predicting for the winter forecast with warmer temperatures out in the southwestern United States, colder temperatures up here. And that appears to be the case, and that appears to continue through uh, at least the next week or so. Now, this is the area you're going to want, want to watch over here. Um, watch this as we uh, go forward into Sunday into Monday. We see this piece of energy spill south. This is... Uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. This energy right here is going to be uh, supportive of potential snow for the northern plains into the Great Lakes region, uh, potentially a clipper. And uh, the snow usually happens right out ahead of these vorticity maximums. So you're going to see some snow right out, out in this area right here uh, show up in the models, which we'll look at in a second. But behind this, uh, we're going to see some very cold air from a very cold air mass up here in uh, Canada spill south into the United States and it potentially could be historic on a Sunday night into Monday morning and that's going to spill south uh, on Monday morning here and deliver some very cold temperatures for uh, much of this area of the United States so we got a pretty crazy uh, Arctic pattern coming up here and as we go forward you know later into the week we can see some more cold shots potentially for the uh, northeastern United States. So we could be having uh, some prolonged cold out here in the uh, Great Lakes region in the northeastern United States as well uh, later in the week towards Thursday, Friday, and so on. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the GFS thickness and precipitation forecast. The thickness is essentially the average temperature in the atmosphere from one 1,000 millibars to 500 millibars, so from the surface to you know, the, uh, the jet stream in a way, and that's essentially the average temperature. So if we have thicker columns, the air is probably warmer because it's expanding. Okay, so warm air expands, so these red lines and stuff indicate warmer temperatures, and if it's uh, more condensed like that, it's colder air. Okay, and that's what's going to be in these uh, blue columns. So the blue areas mean cold and the warm or the red areas mean warm. So let's uh, get going with this here. This is uh, currently, as of uh, Friday night, you got your high pressure sitting out here. It's starting to build. Okay, this thing is a machine out here, really starting to build. Got a strong temperature contrast there. Got a lee side low in Colorado. Warm southerly winds ahead of that. And uh, along that temperature contrast, we got some snowfall right here okay and we got probably a surge of arctic air starting to spill south right here and man is this getting messy but let's uh let's just uh continue this into this weekend okay you see that surge of arctic air now spilling south 
out into the uh, plains. But watch this area out here, right here. We're starting to get another area that builds, and that's going to start spilling south as well. So we're going to get multiple punches here. This is a, a very strong Arctic air outbreak, and you can see some more snow in the northern U.S. But there it goes. There it starts to build. You can see the high pressure right here. And with high pressure systems, we're going to have northerly winds on this side, southerly winds on that side. So this is pushing air from this air mass out here, this very cold air mass, south into the United States. And it's obviously very snow packed up here. There's a lot of snow in the northern United States. That's going to even amplify it even more. And we could be dealing with some very cold temperatures. Now, here's that snow system I was talking about for uh, Sunday morning. You can see along that vorticity maximum I was talking about, you can see some batches of snow. Now, with these types of uh, systems, these little clippers, sometimes you can get some intense banding, localized banding within these uh, systems. You can see this area, the model is only saying about probably 0.01 inches of uh, snow, which would translate to about a tenth of an inch of snow or so, probably a twentieth of an inch with the, the ratios um, in those temperatures. But I think you're going to see some areas where there's going to be patchy areas where the, the snow will be heavier. But overall, this uh, system appears to be pretty weak, but an inch or two of snow is possible in some of these areas. And uh, here's your surge of Arctic air now coming south uh, along that uh, batch of snow. And so we'll go towards Sunday uh, afternoon, Sunday night, okay, and you can see that high pressure really starting to strengthen, 1,054 now, and that gets all the way down to Nebraska on uh, Monday morning. Here's our high pressure center right here. So there's a deep, deep polar air mass in this area right here, and that continues to push all the way south into the southeastern United States, probably even Florida, going to see some very cold temperatures, much colder than average. And uh, you can see some warm temperatures out in uh, California and a very strong temperature contrast here near the Rockies. So Denver is going to be right on the right on the edge of this thing. I think it's going to be east of the mountains here. But uh, very cold temperatures coming. And uh, we'll look just quickly uh, for the rest of the week here. That will continue to spill southwards. High pressure center in the southeastern United States now. Yes, it's going to get cold for them as well. And uh, another surge spills out into the northeastern United States around Thursday into Friday as well. But we also have another high up here building over here, and that's going to kind of move southward into the northeastern United States. And so there could be another punch towards the end of the week into the northeastern United States. And as you can see, that kind of scoops out in that area. So let's look at temperatures now. All right, so let's look at the wind chills now. This is uh, the forecasted wind chills by the Canadian computer model, the GDPS here for uh, Monday morning at 12Z. It's around give or take 6 a.m. And very cold temperatures or wind chills for the, the area, that Arctic air mass that I was talking about, that high pressure area in this region right here. I mean, this is unprecedented. This model is forecasting native 40s, 50s, even maybe even close to negative 60 uh, degree temperatures out here in Montana as well as Nebraska and Iowa. That's unprecedented. This is uh, kind of when the, the or whole ordeal is the strongest on Monday morning. And I think the Canadian's overdone. But let's look at the past uh, few runs of the Canadian to see how consistent it is. That's uh, one thing we want to look at is consistency. So this is going back three days now for the same time, Monday morning at 12Z. So we're going to kind of go through a few different model runs here. So a few days ago, I had negative 40s and 30s, a little bit weaker. Then it builds it a little bit, builds it even more, um, and then uh, builds it even more, and that maybe drops off a little bit. But overall, it's been actually getting even more crazy with this uh, Arctic air mass. But I expect this to kind of uh, fall off a little bit uh, again as we get closer. The uh, Canadian model has been known to overdo cold air masses sometimes. Um, that's what I've noticed at least. Some very uh, There's a bit of a cold bias there, so I think it's overdone. Now let's look at the GFS for the same time. The latest run of the GFS says negative 20s and 30s, maybe even some negative 40s. I think that's a lot more realistic. That's still uh, very, very cold temperatures, still unprecedented, at least for wind chills. This is uh, wind chills we're looking at. And we'll, we'll look, quickly look at the, uh, the trend for uh, 
the GFS as well, this is a few days ago, it was actually a little bit stronger in the central US with negative 40s. And for the most part since then, it's been very consistent. Maybe a little bit farther north now with the uh, coldest temperatures by 50 to 100 miles. But overall, it's been very consistent with the strength. I think it's a good uh, bet that we're going to see negative 20 to negative 40 degree wind chills in this area, uh, you know, Sunday night into Monday. Again, the snowpack is what's changed. The models were actually forecasting a stronger snow system for this area, that kind of sweep in this area, but it's moved north and it's a little bit weaker. So I think that's, you know, the main reason for the drop off and shift north of those wind chills. But still, very cold temperature is expected. All right, well, quickly take a look at the NAM computer model. This is uh, in the NAMS range now. This goes out 84 hours. And it's actually a lot warmer with the whole thing. We'll go into uh, Sunday night into Monday. And, you know, this is at 12Z. This is at that same time. And you can see negative 20s mostly. Negative teens, maybe even negative single digits. And it's also a little bit further north. Uh, with that air mass the nam i think is a little bit warm um, I th a couple days ago it was overshooting temperatures in some of the areas in the midwest by 10 to 20 degrees i think there's a big warm bias on the nam it's having some problems so i think it's gonna be something in between the nam and the the uh, gf the uh, canadian model and that would favor the gfs so i think that gfs has been the most consistent and it has really had the best uh overall uh handle on this and we'll look at temperatures really quickly here these are the temperature anomalies this is from a few days ago you see that first surge of arctic air kind of moves through then your second surge on saturday and then that third surge coming down sunday and that really goes all the way down to florida the gulf past the gulf coast and we're going to go later into the week more surges of arctic air in the northeastern united states another surge early next into next week and you can really see that that pattern that I was talking about in the winter forecast is really set up pretty nicely here with uh, colder temperatures out in this area warmer temperatures out in the south western United States and if anything uh, the, it's actually been a little bit colder than uh, forecasted for the southeastern United States we've been really getting a, a lot of cold surges down south but that pattern's really starting to set up with the coldest air out in the interior northeast the great lakes region and the northern u.s but uh, we'll go back towards that arctic outbreak on tuesday or monday and tuesday and you can see temperature anomalies as much as 20 to maybe even 30 degrees below average for the midwestern region and into the northeastern united states so we're dealing with some very cold temperatures and then warmer temperatures out in the southwestern united states all right and lastly let's look at the temperatures for the next week the actual temperatures we got our high pressure system out here that's going to have a lot of temperature or a lot of cold temperatures following it you can see that strong thermal contrast and uh, it's along this zone and, and especially east of this zone that you're going to see the best arctic air mass and that's a very tight gradient precipitation likely along that zone as well so we're going to fast forward this as we go into saturday it starts to spill south starts to build south into Sunday, Sunday night, and into Monday morning. This is uh, when it's going to be the strongest. You got temperatures probably in the negative 10 to negative 30 range for much of the northern U.S., interior, northeastern United States as well. I mean, that is probably a third of the United States with sub zero temperatures, maybe even half. And uh, that will continue to push south Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and kind of weaken. It's going to start to weaken, but Nonetheless, you're going to still get freezing temperatures, maybe even all the way down to uh, southern Texas and Florida. So, very cold temperatures for that area. As you get towards Thursday and uh, Friday, another surge of Arctic air going to spill south into the northeastern United States uh, and also in the Great Lakes region, Midwest. And then as we get into Friday into the weekend, another surge into the Midwest, the northern plains. And that'll track east as well. So continuous surges of uh, cold air kind of in this region right here. And so very below, te below average temperatures in that area. With uh, some clippers expected out in the northern plains, the uh, Great Lakes region, and maybe some uh, snow events running up the coast as well. We'll have to keep watch on that. But 
this uh, this is going to be uh, more of a clipper pattern and also some lake effect snow as well and very cold temperatures. So with all that being said, that concludes today's edition of State of the Weather Address. And don't forget to comment below the events that you'd like me to talk about. We're going to make some cool event breakdowns. Uh, and so just comment below some, some suggestions there. And if you want more forecasting tutorials and forecasts for the United States, want to learn how to forecast the weather, or just uh, sit back and watch me talk about the weather pattern, just go ahead and click subscribe below this video. Get the subscribe button there and click on it. I'll be making more of these uh, probably more frequently here uh, as we get uh, into the winter and towards the spring here and beyond. So click subscribe. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you soon.